Should you get the DJI Spark, the Mavic Air, or the Mavic Pro? Good question. Hey everyone, welcome back to Tech Byte. I've got yet another drone video for you today and I know I've had quite a few of these recently, but rest assured I am not turning this channel into a pure drone channel. It's just that some pretty exciting stuff has been happening recently. And by recently, I mean like 10 minutes ago. <laughs> So DJI just unveiled their latest and greatest drone, the DJI Mavic Air, which they've allegedly been working on ever since the Mavic Pro came out, which is a long time. But all that time they spent on this drone definitely shows because this is an impressive piece of technology. So before we go ahead and take a look at the new dynamic that has been created between the Spark, the Mavic Air, and the Mavic Pro, and determine which drone is the best for you, I'm gonna give you a quick rundown of all the new features the Mavic Air has. But brace yourself. It's a lot. <laughs> Got them all written down. Here we go. The DJI Mavic Air features a completely redesigned and super aerodynamic body, a redesigned three axis gimbal and gimbal casing, which will dramatically reduce the amount of vibration that the camera experiences, a camera capable of shooting at 4K and 30 frames per second or 120 frames per second, still in full HD, sporting a 1 over 2.3 inch sensor with a 24 millimeter f2.8 lens. 7 cameras for forward, downward, and backwards obstacle avoidance, 2.5 miles or 4 kilometers of range thanks to its omnidirectional antennas that are embedded inside of the landing gear. Oh yeah, and the camera also does HDR and shoots in H.264, which is the new high efficiency video codec, which will save 40% more space. The Mavic Air has 21 minutes of flight time, 8 gigabytes of internal storage, which will be great if you forget your SD cards, a USB-C port, and is half the size of the Mavic and 40% lighter. This thing is tiny, seriously. I mean, this guy had not one, not two, but three of them on him when he walked on stage. It's tiny. The Mavic Air is of course still foldable, has a redesigned controller with detachable thumbsticks that you can store inside of the controller. It comes in three colors, red, black, and white, and it has a top speed of 62.5, nope, 42.5 miles per hour or 68 kilometers per hour which is crazy fast. It also has an updated gesture control system, which is really cool, as well as new intelligent flight modes and better active track technology, which will allow you to track up to 16 subjects at once. Bam. Okay, <laughs> that was a lot. So now to answer the question, should you get the Spark, the Mavic Air, or the Mavic Pro? In my opinion, for some people, the answer will be pretty straightforward. If you're one of the people who was torn between getting a Spark or a Mavic, your dreams have basically come true. DJI has made something right in between with a lot of the Mavic's features, but still retaining the small size and portability of the Spark. So if you couldn't make up your mind before, the answer now should be clearer than ever because this new drone is literally right in between the two. Get the Mavic Air. But for those of you who are just now jumping into the drone game, <laughs> the drone game. Let's analyze the situation in a bit more detail. So first, let's start by comparing the Mavic Air and the Mavic Pro. With the Mavic Air, I think that DJI may have completely killed or made the Mavic Pro obsolete because the Mavic Air, this is going to get confusing, I'm going to call it Air and Pro. The Air goes head to head with the Pro and even outdoes it in some regards. And of course, there are also some aspects in which it is outdone by the Pro. So both of them are able to shoot in 4K at 30 frames per second, but the Air can actually do 120 frames per second in Full HD, which the Pro can't. The Air also has HDR and uses the H.264 file storage system, which will save 40% more space, which the Pro doesn't have. So in terms of the camera, the Mavic Air seems to outdo the Pro in many ways. Now, whether or not that is 100% true remains to be seen as we haven't been able to get our hands on any user footage of the Mavic Air to compare with the Pro, but it looks pretty promising. The Air also has the Pro beaten in terms of its vision and obstacle avoidance system, as it can not only sense and avoid obstacles in front of and below it, but also behind it. The Air also comes with 8GB of internal storage, whereas the Pro does not, which means that if you have the Air, forgetting your SD card isn't going to be as big of a problem as with the Pro. You'll also be able to get your files off of the Air much faster than the Pro because the Air uses USB-C, which is faster. In terms of size, it is half that of the Mavic Pro and weighs 40% less, which means that it's going to be a lot more portable, but also more prone to getting carried around a bit by the wind. 
Now the Pro still has the air beaten in terms of flight time. You'll be able to get about 21 minutes of flight time out of the air, whereas you can get up to 30 from the Pro. The range of the Pro also far outdoes that of the air coming in at four miles instead of 2.5 or seven kilometers instead of four. And that's mainly because the Pro uses a technology called OcuSync, whereas the air just operates on Wi-Fi that gets boosted. Quick side note, I just made a video about the problem that most DJI drones will have if you're flying outside of the US. It has to do with range. If you wanna go check that out, click the, the thing up there or the link in the description. The only thing we can't say for sure yet is how good the three axis gimbal will be on the air because we haven't been able to use it yet. So between the Mavic Pro and the Mavic Air, you're probably gonna wanna lean more towards the Mavic Air side, unless you're really keen on those seven kilometers or four miles of range, the increased flight time and the increased stability in winds. But overall, the Mavic Air really does seem to do everything the Pro does and more. And it's cheaper. The Mavic Pro is still a really awesome and capable drone, but it is now just gonna be for a more select group of people who really want that extra range, the extra flight time, and the increased stability. For the average person though, the Mavic Air is the new star of the show and is definitely the one you want to go with. All right, so now before we wrap up, let's quickly take a look at the difference between the Spark and the Mavic Air. While I'm not 100% sure, I think that the Mavic Air in its folded state is actually even smaller than the Spark, just because you can't fold the wings. So the difference between the Spark and the Mavic Air is the type of person who's gonna be using it. The Spark is still really just that small drone that you can toss in your backpack and you can charge with a power bank and just use to take pictures of your family, your friends while on vacation, and just quickly get the drone in the air, get a shot and come back down. The 10 minute battery life which I've been able to get out of it also reinforces that statement as you really won't have much time to do anything more complex than just take a couple quick pictures or videos. Now it is possible to get cinematic on this but you just don't have as much time and it's much harder. The Mavic Air basically blows the spark out of the water in almost every single regard except for the portability and the fact that you can charge this with a power bank and more importantly the price. The Spark comes in at $500 if you want to get it without the controller, whereas the Mavic Air is going to cost you $800. So here's my take on this. The Spark is $500 and you can use it to get some really cool pictures of your friends and family, like I said, on vacation or anytime a cool opportunity arises. But if you want to be able to do a little bit more with your Spark, you're probably going to end up purchasing the Flymore Combo, which among many other things will give you a remote controller, enabling you to fly up to 1.2 miles away. Now this is not the best drone for long distance flying. The battery is kind of weak, it only has a two axis gimbal, and it can get carried around by the wind pretty easily. So if you want to buy the Fly More combo, that's going to cost you somewhere around $700. And I think you can kind of see where I'm going with this. If you're going to be spending $700 on the Spark Fly More combo to maybe sometimes fly a little bit further and get some hard to get cinematic shots, then you might as well just pay an extra $100 and get the Mavic Air. With the Mavic Air, you have a much better range, a 4K camera as opposed to 1080p. You have more sensors to avoid crashing, and overall, it's just a better drone. So if you just want the Spark because it's quick, it's convenient, and takes pretty cool pictures, then I definitely recommend that you stick with that. However, if you wanna do some more with your Spark, though, fly further away, get some cooler shots, and are thinking about getting the controller, then I recommend just skip the Spark and go straight for the Mavic Air. Sure, it's a bit more expensive, but when you think about it, not only will the features you'll be getting be much better than those of the Spark, they'll also be better in many ways than those of the Mavic Pro. So in my mind, the Mavic Air is the obvious and almost too good to be true choice. So just to recap, the groups of people who the Spark and the Mavic Pro are for have now significantly shrunk as the DJI Mavic Air has taken a significant chunk out of both of them because it just offers the best of both worlds. If you want to fly further and for longer, get the Mavic Pro. If you want quick and easy, cool looking pictures, get the Spark. And if you want anything in between, I say get the Mavic Air as it really does seem to be the new king of the drones. So that's gonna wrap it up for this video. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you got some useful information out of it. If you did, why not click that like button? It helps out a bunch. Also, if you think I've earned it, consider subscribing as that would really mean a lot. Other than that, thank you guys so much for watching and I will catch you in the next one.